Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about cleaning up after the floods we've had recently, fixing a cooling problem in a Yamaha outboard and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Here's another mooring boy ahead of us. You can see how much the flow of the water just pushes them under. So I hear the rubbish tips have waived their fees at the moment. So you can dump as much as you want. Yeah. Oh, got it. <laughs> well done. We found uh, three bottles of spirits and a jar of Vegemite in the fridge. Yeah, I heard about the Vegemite. <laughs> <That's a cracker. laughs> and then everyone going, the biggest question of this whole adventure is who puts Vegemite in the fridge? <laughs> we do. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, actually, Lars, can you tell me why, why do you keep your Vegemite in the fridge? I don't know, we just do. <laughs> There's the answer, folks. <laughs> this has just been here. It's still a metre deep under the bottom. Wow. They obviously made it pretty strong. Not everyone's upset about this mess, of course. The uh, variety of sea chickens in the area are all quite happy to find these little floating islands populated by bugs and lizards to eat. This is the stump that was uh, next to Renko. Will it improve the cooling? It will definitely improve your cooling. Dave's boat's overheating, oh, so uh, we just, we just decided to drift yeah. home. At least it's going to spin us in the right direction. So that is weird. That has not moved in... Has now. Did it? Yeah, right. Oh no, there it is. But that hasn't moved in 48 hours now. Must be something reasonably solid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Arne. Rosie! Poor little Rosie. Is it still there? Yeah, it's still there. Down even further, huh? uh, no, 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 I didn't move. I'll drag it with Rinko tomorrow. There's your house, Dave. I think we should go there. Edward! I don't think anyone. Look at the, the tree in front of you, Bronnie. Yeah, I'll do a reverse out here. Let's go slow. Very right, interesting. Wow, more fridges, fridges, fridges everywhere, and not a drop to drink. All right, we'll come and pick you up, Bronick. Okay. So, which one do you want to move first, Pete? I want to just see. Oh, I'll see you up there. Yep. yep. We just see it that you were more private. I'm feeling like I wouldn't bother moving if it was me, but yeah, I want to go back to the island. I want to work on the boat, but I uh, oh, am oh. I on, I'm on commercial too. God, it's such a shame. We're on commercials, yeah. and you're on privates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I could talk to Bronix and to mine. Uh, do you want to just go alongside? I think I just threw it in the side of the cockpit anyway. So when am I picking you up? Tomorrow or day after? <laughs> Five minutes. Done. <laughs> Still to this day, I think the only good boating tip I've ever shared with the community at large is that if you put your beer and slide it back, it locks in quite nicely. That's my gift of humanity. Actually, I've got one other one, which is if ever you're driving really, really fast, 
and it's cold and you know the wind gets in your eyes and your eyes run if you then do like the play binoculars forms high pressure and you can see perfectly clearly that's another tip try it i'm actually not joking it works i was just at the beach at refuge bay then looking at the waterfall and uh saw a nice couple scott and amanda who are from lenkove and they were cleaning up the beach a little bit I then started talking to them about our plans to have a bit of a, a working bee cleanup. So, we need to set a date to make that happen. Found a salu bin on the beach, very handy, because we can now start putting some more rubbish in that. But we do need, uh, probably get some sponsors, maybe talk to Bunnings about some rakes, some gloves, and we need some bulker bags too to put the rubbish in, so once we've got the bulker bags, we can get them lifted off and craned off the trucks. This is Pete's mooring. Pedal said he was watching us as we were sort of fiddling around. We came north, out from where he's moored. But this is how far we drifted down while we were sort of working on the problem. Pretty much level with his place. But it disappears at high tide, so I'm going to put this as an extra float on. And then we'll get it put back where it belongs. There's not a lot of flotation in that yellow boy either, so it can't be lifting the whole ground chain off, surely. Anyway, let's just put a bit of extra flotation to be sure we don't lose it again. And then uh, call Vic or one of the other mooring contractors to reposition it. Ugh. Now here's a genuine question for you. We call them boys, Americans call them buoys. Do Americans say buoyancy or do they say buoyancy? Put the bite of the line to the white boy through the handle of the blue container. Then put the bite through the eye of the yellow one. Clipped it there, locks it all in. Should be good. It should give us plenty buoyancy to make sure we don't lose it. Another day is done. Renko back on the mooring but certainly some water coming past. Bit of stick stuck here again already. Well I've been clearing rubbish off regularly. I think the more regularly I do it the less it's going to uh, become a problem. It would be interesting to put a paddle wheel in the water and see what uh, the current's actually doing. It's funny, it's not something I often pay a lot of attention to, just pull up in the mooring, normally doing a tight turn, pick up the mooring. But uh, just going to the wheelhouse then and centering the rudder has actually made quite a difference to how the boat sits because there's obviously so much water flowing past the rudder that uh, yeah having a straight's made the boat sit much more nicely not surprisingly but you know there you go another tire going past this is all the stuff we've got to grab so much of it i mean much less than there was of course but a lot of it's on beaches which means cleaning it up is now going to be a lot easier a couple of people commented in the last video about uh, the deck being messy, and uh, that's because it's a work site. When it's a finished boat, it won't be messy. It's not complicated. But uh, I took the boat to Brooklyn, and Dave and I loaded heaps of stuff uh, from the mainland onto the boat. Ultimately, it's a ute. It's like having everything for a building site in the back of a ute, and then somebody going, oh, the back of a ute's very full, and you're going, well, yeah, genius. What I'm going to do though, to try and make a little bit more space while we're working, is test fit one of these freshwater tanks. So let's get it below and have a look where we're going to try and put it. I'm just having a look, one of, not that you couldn't put a plug in, but one of the holes on both of these tanks seems to have been drilled poorly. Uh, they give you a certain size for a hole saw to drill it out, and then it's a one and a half inch uh, thread. I am going to cross-link both tanks so they draw evenly possibly with valves to stop that happening if I want to ballast the boat side to side um, and I'm gonna have a separate fill on the top for both tanks
if we extend this plywood to the back, which it already is on that side, it's kind of a no-brainer. I was thinking of raising it up so that it could go right to the back of the boat, but obviously low center of gravity is good, and if I want to ballast the stern down a bit more, which I do, I can always just put more lead in. I reckon we just do that, port and starboard, and call it good. Thinking what I'll do is attach a batten that goes in here. It's hard up against that sort of rib over there, and then another batten across the front, maybe some ratchet straps, and it just can't go anywhere. I think for once the job's actually going to be easier than I thought, not harder. How good is that? And yes, my temporary lighting wiring needs a conduit, P clamps, all that kind of good stuff. I also have uh, some pipe that I'm going to cut and weld through the deck to take the power for the fridge and then I'm making a separate hose fitting for the outlet from the water pump. Lots and lots and lots of jobs to do. You know, I might put the other water tank in too, and that'll give me a sense of what space I've got left over for tools, because I do intend to take quite a few tools with me on the trip as well. Sorry mate, not doing autographs today. Hello, are you going to Patonga? <laughs> Would you like a lift to lift Patonga? Um, do you want to bring it alongside the wharf? Yeah, do you want to have a look at your yummy? Well, do you want to put, um, Franco in there if you want. Yeah, and we'll look at your yummy? We'll just play it, yeah. Yeah, alright. Yeah. Cool, alright. Um, <laughs> yeah, true. Alright, I'll see you soon. Uh, well, lucky I cleaned up. We're going to Dave's house for a bit. I'm going to make sure everything is in these fish bins because these ones are great. The lids come over. I've actually got most of these out to dry them. They've got a bit of water in them, which I don't want. So while the sun's out, I'll dry them, put the lids on, and then of course we'll fix the cause of the leak, which is the deck. Dave's been having an overheating problem with his uh, Yamaha outboard since the floods when he was helping Terry. Got the alarm put a new impeller in, blew water right through the cooling system as much as he could, still overheating. So we're going to have a quick look at that now too. Oh, got the hose hooked up. Oh, oh just popped off. <laughs> All right, hang on. Here's Robinson technique. Like, like, that's hose power. It's got it this far. There we go. Yeah, it's come out of your fitting. Well, only because I didn't actually have any probably in. Oh, I see. So, this obviously isn't oh, a go. test of the pump or anything. So, and do, oh, God, hang on. I think it's good to... Do you want a fitting, Dave? If you have one. I have one. Oh, okay. Um, um, no, no, take that off. Into there? Yeah. yeah. That's it. Let's get one of these. What's that? Half inch. No, no, other way. way yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. Knew that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and that's the fitting from the end of your hose. Well, it will be. Yeah. Once cool. I put it back together. Oh, cool. okay. Kicking goals now, pedals. Yeah. So, history so far is you've had the leg off. Yeah. You've put a new impeller in. Yeah. And you flushed it all the way from the impeller. So when you run it, water does come all the way up. Yeah. And, huh? Turn it off, yeah. yeah. And the thermostat was stuck open. So I've taken, I've taken the thermostat. So no thermostat in, and it overheated. Yep. Steam coming out the telltale. And now with water pressure. Okay, so put it back on. And coming out of here now. Okay. So it comes out of the thermostat, yeah. fresh water, but I'll turn it off, it's alright. So it definitely comes out there. Yeah. So I think you've got a blockage after the thermostat. So this side? Yep. Okay. I think the thermostat's opening, but, the, ooh, but there's nowhere for the water to go. Yeah. Therefore it can't flow, therefore you overheat. 
So how do I clean it out? Well, we can try and blow down here, but we so we can either use compressed air mm -hmm. or we could take this whole exhaust cover off. Mm -hmm. on. I can see what you're saying about the hole there. I just, is, that a, is that actually broken? It's like a, a, um, a corrosion thing. Mm, it doesn't look regularly shaped. Is it going anywhere after that? Well, it's coming out of that hole, for sure. Which hole? The other hole? Yeah, the hole. The blown yeah, No, that doesn't go through. You could actually leave the core. Take your HT leads off. Yeah. Just keep an eye on because they're not obvious which way they go. Okay. Take a photo. Yeah. Take your HT leads off. Unplug these two. Try get these Three. tricky ones first because they're the one. The ones at the bottom are the ones that are going to give you trouble. Let's get on. Well, yeah, we'll get off. So there's no point fighting all these ones and then not being able to get those ones. So yeah. get the hard ones first. Get a photo of your HT leads. Take this one. Nah, I don't think so. You'll be able to get a little spanner in there. Yeah. Have you got is a 10 mil only, spanner? Yeah. Is that the only one? One there. And one, one down there. there. Yeah. One there, which is a bit difficult. Mm, I think it's just two at the bottom, isn't it? Just two. It's not yeah. too bad. All right. Still clear? I think so. I, unless I can't see any of this. Going all the way through? Well, attaching it. It may, but I don't think so. It's is odd, isn't it? Yeah. It looks like maybe. <laughs> yeah. He, he doesn't him, go anywhere, though. No. I'm thinking anodes or something. Ports. <laughs> Probably just flushing ports, we could have opened easily. <laughs> well, okay, yeah, give it a whirl. Yeah, it's going. There we go. Okay, da, 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 da. not too bad. Mm. So, uh, is that you? Good. <laughs> I hate when my phone rings. It's always like, oh no. It's cold call, should I take it? So, that down there. Is that a bit of anode? Could be. It's pretty clean. It doesn't look too bad, does it? <sighs> Crazy gasket. Yeah. That's What's that in the head? That's factor, that's corrosion, not not. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, right. So that is that's into the exhaust. That's oh. interesting, that's what that is. Okay. So if you open that, yeah. exhaust would come out. And if that would have opened water, would it? And this would have opened water. Yeah, it, uh, yeah, both sides, that side and that side. So water, water, exhaust, tail, and tail. anode. Hmm. So yes, access plug to water, access plug to water, access plug to exhaust, anode. Interesting. Now, what I'm wondering is what's that in the bottom? See there? Yeah. Where's your flathead screwdriver? Oh, is it just I, junk? I think it's a bit of anode. Come off. Well, that's blocked. Is that the only way? So when your thermostat opens, mm -hmm. it flows to here. There's nowhere for it to go, is there? Yeah, I think it was blocked with this bit of anode. Wow. Is my guess. Then the other little bit of anode went down. And will end up in the exhaust outside yeah. the bum. So where did that come off? So that... Unless it's the piece of engine, well, side of probably the engine. Well, it's probably the pencil anode from here. Oh, of course. Yeah. See, so look at that. I reckon that anode... Just blocks it. ...broke off and fell into there. Oh, Stewie, you're a genius. Doesn't look like it should have been in there, does it? No, no, it's broken off there. Yeah, so it's that anode that's failed. That's easy enough, isn't it? It's fallen off, and that's the tiny hole that the water goes through. Well, what would I do with him? Would I bung him up? Bog, bog him up? It's not the end of the earth, because if it does free flow, it's like not having a thermostat. Mm. Of all the places to have corrosion, that's actually pretty good. You could JB weld it, but do you risk the JB weld coming off and falling into your... What's JB weld? Oh, it's like a metal epoxy, me metal epoxy Devcon, okay. Devcon F, that kind of thing. But that's why you're overheating. I, it's actually very, very unrelated to the floods. Yes. <laughs> Oddly. Just got helped by Just it. Just an unusual timing. Here we go. It's smooth. Well done. It's like pulling a bullet out of someone's leg. Yeah. Yeah, so blocking, passage blocked with an anode. Um, interesting. Um, there you go. And we know what all those little plugs do now. Mm. We've turned, so we've curiously, well, but curiously, where's the rest of it? We could have taken both 
So where are we? That way. We wouldn't have found it. Though, would we? Probably not. But if we'd taken both of those off, we might have been able to see it with like the little bore scope. Mm. And then we could have broken it up just by jabbing it with a screwdriver. Yeah. So you should theoretically buy a anode. exhaust cover gasket and an anode. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Look, you've got half a chance. If you want, try it. You want to use the boat. Well. I've got, clean it up best you can. Yeah. Got to clean that, clean that, clean that. Yeah. And I've got some goo you can put on. Cool, let's do it. And try. I can go buy one, it's not problem. Well, put that on and order a new one. Yeah. Cover both bases. Just maybe with like a scotch Sprite pad or something. Yeah. And maybe a lashes. And uh, yeah, yeah, 150 lashes would definitely help. Look at all um, the shell life at the bottom. Uh, into that port as well, doesn't it? How about you and I go and get that piece of glass from the behind your shed now? Where are we putting it? Renko. Yeah, are you going to glass bottom on the Renko? I am, yeah, glass bottom. Um, <laughs> and then we'll clean this up and put it a straight edge and a th and uh, yeah, because if this is curved, it's not going to to do it to seal. Yeah. But I need to get it from you anyway. Yeah. It's easier if I get it from you and then I take it to the public wharf. Yeah. I would definitely put your hose down there. Yeah. See if you can get that uh, out. Yeah, so that should have come out your exhaust. And it, it was less. Oh, I wonder if that would be water dribbling out of my exhaust. Yeah, and it wasn't before with the hose. No. So the water pressure was pushing the anode in. Yeah. I can't believe that hole isn't slightly bigger than the anode, because yes, right. then that could never happen. Yeah. It's almost the exact same size, as though it's meant to be stuck in there. Yeah. All right, let's see if we can get this aluminium frame off this glass using a bit of heat. Honey, how are you, mate? Good, buddy. That's the way. Come on, Ed, Pooh. Come on the other. You know uh, what I can see? Huh? You know what I can see? What? Glass shattering everywhere. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to stand a bit closer? <laughs> Safety goggles. <laughs> Have you been on the farm yet? No. Nah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think it was sitting up in there. Yeah, get a little gem blade and I can only says, have you got any sort of blady things? Yeah, what about that, Pez? Here's a, okay. What's this one? It's just a blade, just. Uh, yeah. Ooh, just ooh. Yeah, just scrape all the old gasket <laughs> off. Um, do you want a little bit of sandpaper just to. <coughs> with some here. Ah, oh, you know what works well, actually, that I have? Ba -ba 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 Brand new, clean, flat. No, I don't want to dirty it. No, no, I bought it for that job, that type of job, exactly. Okay. All right. Here you go, Stu. Would you want your... Thanks. Beast knife. You know you can make an oyster knife out of scissors like that. Mm -hmm. It's a one hour thin type to talk. Specifications allow 24 hours to fully cure before filling fluids or returning to service. Oh, dear. Serious? Yeah. I reckon we call that 20 minutes, then full throttle. Yeah. So we've got to go and get more refreshment. Well, we can go at Renko because I've got to pick up stuff from the print anyway. Okay. Do you park this at the co-op? Yeah, yeah. If you go fast enough, you fit in the spot. <laughs> <laughs> That's why boats are pointy. Is that why you went on? Yeah, go pedals. You're doing well. <laughs> Did you used to work for Michelle's Patisserie? Um, maybe. Oh, you're going to do it that way? Until the incident. Yeah. Don't do it that way. Do, do, do. All right, well, I'll come back in an hour when you finish doing that. <laughs> no. Well, that's the hour drawing time. Yeah, yeah, true, yeah. yeah. It's like the Harbour Bridge. Yes, exactly. All right, I'm going to try and run an angle grind <laughs> down here without breaking the glass. Wish me luck. Yeah. We're at the Dowels. Okay, there's one Dowel there. One there. One there. On. Yeah. Both the dowel holes are clean, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Maybe go for the bottom dowel first. I think he's on. Yeah. I reckon it just needs a few taps. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. All right, yep. <coughs> so put them in evenly, but lightly. Which ones were they? <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Where does it say number one, Stu? Well, start, just start in the middle and do a spiral round. Well, there's one, that's one there, under your hand. Tell me. Oh, 
They're numbered, see? Two, four. Does that make a difference? Well, you want to spiral from the inside and push it out. Like you're trying to get bubbles out of contact or something. Yeah, it's written on it. Wow. Yeah. That's where your leg's going, Chuck. Yeah, the gas thermostat gasket's in the boat, Dave. What? It's in the boat, the thermostat gasket. That tree log or whatever it is has been there since this whole thing started, so we're going to try and drag it out. Security, security, security. All ships, all ships, all ships. This is Marine Rescue Sydney going ahead with a navigation warning for the Hawkesbury, Cowan Creek and Pitchwater areas. Due to severe flooding, there is a large amount of debris, including a container, large household items and tree trunks floating in the water. Also, aid to navigation may be off station. Boaters are advised to exercise extreme caution while navigating in this area. Marine Rescue Sydney, out. I reckon if we can get a, a, an eye and then a twist in the eye, that might constrict around it. Much heavier. Yeah. Don't know. What's down here, We're going to come over to the far side, somewhere near the shore, and drop this log off so no one hits it. Given it was right in a thoroughfare before, it amazes me no one's hit it yet, particularly at high tide when it was just covered. What do you reckon? It's pretty... Starboard help. Not too much? No, we should clean up it. Oh, okay. Well, we should start drifting soon. I'm in neutral. Yeah. Do you want me just to back up and get the slack off? I don't know how long it is. I'm amazed, it actually seems smaller than I was expecting. Yeah, I think it's other than maybe to the back of the boat. Mm. That's the bottom. Yeah, it's gone. It sank. So maybe that was it too, it was heavy enough to sink. Yeah. So instead of floating on, it just got caught in the reef. Get back in the sun. Yeah. Calm night, hopefully. Got a few other things done, but definitely time to go home. Full moon. Sunset. And do a little bit of Don't you trust our handiwork? Turn to port so we can have a look. No, I don't. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Alright. Okay. Yeah, go for it. I can't see any leaks yet. Give it a few herbs. Yeah. Yeah, just put the far side up. Mm, definitely no leaks. But a bit of a weak telltale.
went for a good run under load with the cowling back on and didn't have any overheating problems so it looks like uh, all it was was that anode blocking the water passage. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, lots going on at the moment. I now have working uh, built-in Raymarine VHF and AIS. I'll be doing a video series on that soon. We'll probably be having four or five videos at least back to back because lots of electronic gear is going into the boat at the moment, getting ready for the cruise up the coast. There's lots of other work to do on top of installing all the Raymarine equipment. So we'll be pushing on with the wheelhouse and the back deck as well. All right, we'll take care and I'll catch you next week. See ya. Actually, there's a veggie scrap bin here. It's pretty disgusting, but they do love it. <laughs> Yuck. Old veggie scraps I didn't throw out, but that looks like something chickens would like. Come on, Daisy. Daisy. Look, disgusting maggots. Knock yourself out. Come on, Daisy, you can have some too. Daisy. Come on, Daisy. Be brave. You're not going to let Daisy have any, are you? Come on, Daisy. There we go. Come on, Daisy. And if you're really lucky, you'll get... Oi! Leave her alone. You're such a gut, Staffy. Not much fun being a little chicken, is it, Daisy? If you're really lucky, I'll forget to clean the uh, veggie scrap bin next week, too.